Ladies and gentlemen, another week, another episode of Grassroots Chats. In the studio, I have the angry one, Dunk and Neil. Steve is away this week, but after just a wonderful, once again, I've started with my, my wonderful term, wonderful weekend in the Premier League, where it looks like the title, fourth spot and relegation might be sorted. This week, we are actually talking about managerial implementation in terms of giving flowers to managers that have actually done really well. The managers we're talking about is Mikel Ateta and Graham Potter for Brighton. In case you're watching us live on Twitch, um, that clapping is not us going crazy, but that is actually a sound check. So forgive us for looking like we're, you know, dolphins trying to get, going to get biscuits or something from our owners. If you like this episode, please subscribe, hit the notification button. You can watch all the episodes by going to our website on grassrootchats.com and you can follow us on every single platform, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. Okay, people, let's jump straight into it. And this is one of them situations that as much as you hate or you want to hate them, you have to actually give them their flowers. You have to give them, you know, credit and praise these managers because they have done really well this season. They've probably exceeded expectations. So let's go. Let's start with Mikel Ateta. I mean, he's no stranger to the show. The angry one doesn't really like him sometimes. Neil thinks he's crap. I don't know what Dunk thinks after today's result. But it is fair to say, starting with Dunk, that Mikel Ateta has gone way above expectations. And we can pretty much say Arsenal are going to finish fourth. I, I did give him props last week when we were comparing him to Conte. I said Arteta was doing the better job this season. So I, I, oh, get, okay. I gave him some props last week. Uh, yeah, so again, like, yeah, good result today. Uh, just just got it out of the bag. Leeds were coming back at them in the second half near the end, but they probably should have wrapped it up a bit quicker. Um, but yeah, in the whole scheme of things, um, it's looking like fourth place is going to be on. Okay, so... It, Still, still can't tell. Uh, it's, it's it's so fickle with football, you know. If, if they're in the spot, it's like Leeds down the bottom. If you're in the relegation, oh, you're down this week. But then if you're out of it, you're, you're staying up. So it, it's a little bit fickle there. But I, I think they're I think they're going to do it. It's it's nice for them now that they have that uh, game in hand with Spurs, where they can afford to actually lose it and still be ahead of them in the table. So yeah, it's looking really good for them. And but. Yeah, in the, in the scheme of things, like I said, I gave props to Arteta last week. Um, I think he's done a good job. Definitely uh, bringing in youngsters, which is nice. He's made a couple of signings, which maybe haven't been like the best this season, but hopefully they'll be uh, performing in the team a bit better next season. But yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to give him some props for doing a good job this season. Breaking it down into a journey that Arteta has gone through this season and looking at how things started, Neil... Did you, have, did you think Arsenal would have been in this position looking at how the season started, losing their first three games? I mean, before those first three games, yeah. I mean, would they have a blank checkbook to, I think you said 100 million? New keeper. Uh, 150, 150, I think. A few extra players. It wasn't like there wasn't any investment this season into the, the playing squad. The whole, they're all young and stuff. That's what, it's not like they're academy players that they brought through everybody from the academy. So I think, there's an element of you're, you're, you're bringing youngsters into the team, but you've bought those youngsters as well. So he has to be held accountable for a lot of those purchases uh, in that he's done well. He's had a good season. I don't I don't know if I saw them coming fourth in the league uh, at any particular point, even though they've been in there. And, and, and to be fair, over the course of the season, they've continuously played, I don't want to say amazing football, they've continuously stumbled their way through the season up uh, I want to say uh, a ray of um, getting better, grinding out results. It's not necessarily the most attractive football that the Arsenal have ever played, but at the moment they're learning to win, which I think is a really, really key, important thing for Arsenal to to do and to get that into the DNA of these young players to win by it at any means. So yeah, um, I think he's done all right. Has he done as well as he should with the amount of money he spent compared to others? How much leeway do we give him of, of coming forth in the league. I mean, I, I think it's a good uh, project that he's done and they've given him time, right? I and mean, there's no point of, of anywhere in there where anyone was saying he needs to go or, you know, the, that there was rumblings from the board. I don't, I don't think that was ever on the card. That gives the players confidence. I think that gives everybody else confidence associated with the club as well. So kudos to, I say to the Arsenal board as well for having stuck by their man where other other 
clubs would have folded and faulted and got rid of him maybe when he was stumbling around seventh and eighth at one particular point. Um, but yeah. Well, yeah, he has done really well. The angry one, you've had your fair share of how Ateta has done or not done or, you know, how things probably just stumbled by luck into the Arsenal team. But it is fair to say that at this point, could could we actually stop calling him Pep's assistant? Are you going to actually respect him as a manager given what he has done this season with the resources he has had? Well, I always respected him as a manager. Well, sorry, that's not true. I always called him a manager because he's being paid as a manager. He's not being paid as Pep's assistant. It's like what Neil said last week about uh, um, it, it is fair to to compare him to Conte because they're both premiership managers. So that was never an issue for me. He has flopped a lot of the times, let's be honest. But res- results are the results. He, he is where he is, whatever the reason is, poor position, luck, whatever. He is in a good position to get fourth spot. It's not a, it's not a foregone conclusion. It never is with Arsenal. But like, so for example, Eddie and Keche scored two goals today. But he was on the bench for donkey's years and we're playing like her. He scored as many yeah, goals yeah, as yeah. Well. You're never going to forgive Ateta for, no, you know, no, hold on, t- hold on. He scored, he, he scored as many goals. Gabriel and, 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 and Ketcha have scored as many goals as Laka, who's our main striker. And by the way, that's only four goals. It's not like it's 25. So, you can't blame Eddie for not playing. You can only play, you can only blame Ateta for not playing him. And the only reason why he played him is because but um, Laka had, had COVID. So it's never like he just fought, oh, okay, let me play him. So you you have to bear that in mind. Yeah, he It's worked, but it, it, it's not a masterstroke. It kind of, he kind of, as per usual, stumbled on it. But he'll learn from that and hopefully he'll, he will, he'll, he'll, he'll kick on from it. We, we beat, we beat a 10-man lead 2-1, shaved it. She probably should have done them over a little bit longer. But ultimately, at this, at this stage of the season, it's just, it's just the points in the ball that matters. So uh, he's done better than expected. I agree with, with Neil that he spent 150 million, but let's be honest: when you're when you're in your overdraft, 150 million is basically a minus. We're already at a minus anyway because we were so about, far behind the top teams that 150 doesn't really it doesn't really count if you think about it. Really, we we, we only spent 150 million just to be fairly competitive, if, if I'm honest. So I, I wouldn't go over the top about how much we've spent. Um, but I agree with Neil again about them being. We can't keep hiding behind the fact that they're young players. They're they're not they're not kids. They they are just young. Yeah, I mean they're not kids. They're yeah. not kids. We can't hide behind the fact, as Neil said, the it's not like the they all just came from the academy, but they are young. And yeah, comparing young. them to the experienced players that the Premier League has, it is it's still it's it's always very um, shocking, I guess, if that's the word you you want to use, when these players are brought up and they do as well or even do better than people expect them. Going to dunk should some credit be given to the Arsenal board. Now, the reason I ask this is because Ateta came in, it was the whole conversation about a project. So he must probably have given them like a blueprint of what he wants to do, how he wants to implement this project. And of course, results didn't always go his way. But now he has stuck with it, regardless of even if the angry one thinks, you know, some of these things happen by by chance. But he has stuck with the blueprint. It's working. Dunk is trust the process been established nicely yeah well I, I guess uh Mike, mike's probably not too happy about the the last few managers they've had in the process there um but yeah we're definitely with arteta like it, it seems to be it seems to be working out it seems to be a good move i think they may, maybe they were kind of forced into that move after trying a couple of other managers like emery uh poss- possibly like the same kind of situation that man united are in at the minute with like trying out established managers. leave us out leave us <laughs> out let's just stick to the we can just a passing leave us comment out. now. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I again, like I, I don't know all the ins and outs of Arsenal not being a fan. So just just from the outside, it seems like they're 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 going in a good direction at the minute. Um, again, it, it's like how, how where the direction goes though, and j- just on the point of like the the transfers are coming up. Um, like I, I quite like how he spent his money like on on some younger players as well. So instead of just trying to get in like established players um again maybe a bit shy to do that with bitten by the Alabama young experience and things like that and pepe so it's, it's nice to see him like go down that youngster route so i think that's that's a good path to take i if, if that was my club i'd be pretty happy with, with that route as well uh but again yeah i i'd say like as an outsider it looks like they're on the right path 
the the real acid test then is where where it happens goes next season. Is he going to push on from here? Is he going to maintain the level? Is it going to drop off? So we'll we'll see how they do next year. We shall see how they do next year, but till we get there, let I think this is one of them situations where Ateta has gone against some nice pivotal moments this season, and it's looking like every decision he has made, whether you like it at the time, is coming out to look good. So one of the decisions I think he must have, you know, shown a blueprint. This is what I want to do. With time, it has actually gotten. It looks like it's working. And uh, one of the situations that I think he has handled well, which were very critical, was the transfer market. So, Neil, I mean, we didn't think he did really well not buying anybody in January or the way he has handled some certain players. But once again, is this the case of the end is justifying the means? No, I don't, I don't mean, I don't think the transfer market potentially has been great for him. He's, he, he's bought, so he's bought Ben White, been a good sign in. I don't think anyone can disagree with Ben White as as as, as being good for Arsenal compared to what you had, right? Um, Odegaard, Ramsdale, he's bought Tommy Asu, Lukongo, and Tavares. Tavares and Lukongo, Tommy Asu. I mean, a bang average at best for any of those three, which combined is what Tommy Asu, nutcase. Yeah, man, are you mad? Yeah. Tommy Asu, bang, no, bang average, laugh, man. That's 15 million there oh, behave. between those three players. Oh, shut up. What are you talking um, about? Tommy Asu, big Tommy, big T. <laughs> By the way, I made him all You're just names. comparing to but what still. you had, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. Okay. But he's good, though. He's, Tommy's good. Yeah, I mean, he's been a god let since... Man, let the man have his opinion, the angry Let the man talk. He's been gone since, what, um, New Year's Day and then came back, like, last week or the week before? Like a new signing. And I don't think it was needed. Like, so... No, you can keep pulling faces, angry one. You just just wait a second. Have I thought he's done well? And I think those three players, uh, are, are, are decent squad players, are, are a real bad push. They would instantly, if I'm looking to replace them, I'm still looking to get new fullbacks in the team. I'm still looking to get centre midfield just to, to to bolster it up. I, I do think Odegaard's been a good sign-in. Uh, my my fence is still out whether I believe that ESR should be playing in the centre instead of him. Game time is going to be one of those things that is is always going to affect the SR, unfortunately. Um, it, but when you're looking that. at when, when you're looking at the transfer market right now, Neil. So now we're saying he didn't particularly do well, right? He cleared out a lot, loads of players. You have mentioned some players that you think are bang average in your in your words. But is it that he was cleaning it out? You know, making everything nice. And there's a possibility they might probably spend another 150 million getting in some other players. I mean, I said last week, they still need 11 new players. They've got 11 all right players in the team at the moment, but they need to take it to the next level. Saka's hot and cold with his end product. He really doesn't, like today he was poor. So if you're listening to this, on Sunday against Leeds, he was poor. I don't think he crossed the ball decently at all. Martinelli just is only does the same thing every game. He literally just runs and then gets somewhere and gets stuck. And Ketty is definitely lacking a bit of match fitness. But kudos to him. He was he put in a good shift today and he closed down the goalkeeper for for the error. Uh, you look at the centre of the park and you're like, Xhaka still is like getting game time. And I'm not saying he's bad, but I would be thinking he's the player that I want to come into the squad, if that makes sense. He's like my James Milner. I want a better player, but he's going to come in and always carry that ship if it needs to be. Um, and then the fullback wise, I think since Saka's moved up positions and gone further through when they were playing wing backs, I think that's probably uh, Tierney's a great a great fullback, right? And, and I don't think there's any argument with regards to how how good he is. But outside of that, that there's a struggle. Um, it'll be interesting whether Saliba comes back or whether they leave him out on loan for another season. But if they do, he needs to really go and play some Premier League football to get used to the pace uh, and the physicality of the Premier League. Otherwise, that seems to me to be a little bit of a wishy-wash. So all, all in all, the, the, the positives of Ben White, which I think has been a, a great signing for them. And, and Ramsdale, hands down, he's been a great signing. Um, what would Leno have done as well this season under a, a, a full, decent year under Arteta? I don't know. He seemed to play well in the cup when he played. So it's it's out but they definitely need a striker as well to give whoever they've got playing up front and Lukongu I don't know Mike what do you think was he a good signing nah he's dead firm trust me I thought he was a youth I didn't know they signed him yeah he was the um, the captain for Club Bruges 
in uh, what does that he, mean? he was raved. I mean, company said he spoke to Pep to actually try and sign him. He, he was yeah, one of them players term, that people, you know, them players that people were raving about. But in terms of the transfers and the individual, I think one of the things you can give Arteta credit for is, regardless of how bang average you think the players are or some players in work, is that at the end of the day, it worked for the team because they got to possibly where they wanted to get to, even if people think, you know, they've, you know, exceeded expectations. The point is, they improved their position since last season. You could, you could, it's fact. It's not position like you hold, on, hold, on. Hold, on. hold on, hold on, hold on. Yes, my cat, uh, Tibbs. Listen, first of all, summer, summer transfer, yeah, okay, we'll give him props. He bought six, okay, or oh, four decent players and two okay. The two okay are Tavares and Lakonga. Yeah? Because Tommy's a, the conga right that back. you just said is dead. He's okay. Yeah. Okay. As a, <laughs> right. He's okay. He's mm, all right. Anyway, but the January window was dead. Yeah, he got people out, but he didn't get nobody in. And to prove that he didn't know what he was doing, it's not as if he didn't get nobody in, but started playing, but started playing Eddie from January. He only played Eddie like when um, my guy Laka got COVID. So he was happy to go with lack, no goals Laka, Laka goals all the way from January up until now. And and if, if, if like was still fit and hadn't got COVID, he'd have still been playing him. So the fact that, that, that Eddie's coming in, been a breath, breath of fresh air, blah, 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 whatever, is pure coincidence uh, and of circumstance. So for me, the January window was a flop in terms of getting players in. Yeah, getting players out, he's, they've done well, they've cleared the decks. But getting people in, they let me ask you, in. Let, me, let, me, let me ask you this question, the angry one, you and Neil. Um, let's, let's start with the angry one. Do you think if you actually place the January transfer window with what Ateta has done and you don't think he, he got it right, do mm. you think you would have been in a higher position or at least confirmed third if he got it right? Because, I mean, if he hasn't yeah. gotten it right now, you could still finish third. So do you think you'd have been in a confirmed yeah. third if he got because, it right? Because he, cause he got rid of Oba, personally, no problem with that, but he didn't replace him, nor did he identify... Say, so for example, Eddie as his replacement. Yeah, what he did was he got rid of, got rid of Oba and then just left Laka there. And Laka didn't even score a goal since then, by the way. So, and, and we muddled through, blah, blah, blah. And we've it's kind of worked out. So you can't knock that it's worked out. But if you look back at it, his plan didn't work. His, his plan was a flop. It just happened. Circumstance happened that it's worked out now. But that wasn't his plan. Okay. He, 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 and he bumbled through it. He just he bumbled, bumbled through it, it. And, he, and he got okay. lucky. Neil? Yeah. I, I mean, for a guy that's quite um, assertive about what he wants out of his players and everything, I think that was one of his fundamental flaws. Not uh, Obama had to go, right? There was no doubt about it. He wasn't performing. He was on a lot of money. There was a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes that none of us know about yet. But I think it came to that point of... Uh, Mike's right there's the Enketia situation hasn't been handled well and whether that's because he's rejected a contract or or because there's not enough faith in him to, to play there needed to be that conversation of mate you're going to start we've got rid of Obama Yang you're the Arsenal future let's go and give it six, at the end of the season say let the ball's in your court we've offered you this contract if you go and perform really well maybe we we give you more money you've got now into the end of the season to prove what you're worth um, and that hasn't been vocalized there hasn't been anything in there f for that so that kind of is a bit weird and then not getting a backup striker is just um ridiculous and pepe barely plays any football so if pepe's going pepe needs to, to hurry up and go so w would they have got third i think this premier league's probably been the weirdest premier league that i remember of you've got two people clear of everyone else right man city and liverpool and then the conversations come between three, third foot, fifth, sixth, and maybe seventh at one particular point. You've got West Ham all the way up to um, Chelsea, right, for who's going to get into the Champions League. But no one's had that form of they're going to get into the Champions League. It's almost like when anyone gets any form, there's this really bad patch for three games that they have of where they go and lose. And I think that's the same with Arsenal, uh, Tottenham, and Chelsea this season. So you can only win what's in front of you right, and be as good as you are. He was never going to be as good as the top two, but I think maybe that shows that there's a massive gulf between everyone else and, and the top two. Would another of manager, I suppose this is the key point, 
got more out of that squad and made better decisions. Would Conte at January coming in, would if he has had a big impact at that Arsenal team as he has at Spurs team, that would have been really interesting to, to, to see what would have happened there and what he would have done. Because one that's... of the key things, one of the key things you've mentioned, sorry to cut you, but one sure. of the key things you've mentioned is, is that we don't know what's happening in the scenes. We have no idea where if Ateta had asked for. So they, speaking to Karim, if you guys remember who that is, I was speaking to Karim earlier on today. Who's that? Who's that guy? They, they, some the the guy that likes to eat crisps. Anyway, oh they, that guy. I, I was speaking yeah. to him, and the rumor was Conte actually wanted six players to come in in January, and he got two. So, and as you say, with Arsenal being so, you know, quiet behind closed doors, you never know if Ateta actually wanted more players. I believe he probably wanted more players, but he didn't get it. But you guys think he handled the January transfer window badly or not as good as he should have, which is all good. But moving on, at the end of the day, as I said, it's a situation, the angry one thinks he just is lucky. Neil thinks he could have done better. Now, in terms of another situation that some people still argue he should have, he shouldn't have, or should maybe he should have gotten a replacement. Dunk, let's talk about Obama Young. Was that situation based on what we know? Not no ifs, no but, no maybes. Based on what we know, was he handled nicely by Ateta? Uh, you, you've got to say, like Obama Yang must have been seriously out of line for that situation to develop and out of line a number of times. Um, so I guess they just kind of felt they had no choice but to boot him for the sake of like club harmony, the atmosphere around the club. Um, so it, it looked like a bad decision at the time. And obviously Albama Yang's been banging him in for Barcelona. Um, but if, if you look at where Arsenal at now, you, you've got to say well, it looks like it was a reasonably good decision because he's, again, if for club harmony and get them performing together as a team, um, Again, is is probably pretty bad on the financial side, um, but in terms of where the club has ended up now, looks like the right decision. Okay, Neil, I one do you you have probably spoken strongly about the way what Ateta did in terms of handling Obama Young, showing everybody else that no man is bigger than the club, and based on the balance of transfer handling replacements. What do you think about our situation? Do you still stick to the fact that it was handled well, or should have some something better would have, should something better have done or have been done? Sorry, I, I think it's twenty twenty two now, so I know the year. But what I mean by that is the fans are a lot more intelligent now. We demand answers. That there's more outlets for news. There's there's instant news. If something happens, it's instantly on Twitter. You know, Gary Lineker evidently is being replaced on Match of the Day by James Corden. So he's not. But that was all over Twitter. So what I'm trying to say is news comes out really quick and, and there's this, I mean, they've obviously approached me for match of the day, but um, there's there's news coming yeah. out quick, left, right and centre. And where when the club don't converse to the fans, I think it takes away an essence of that, of, I want to say loyalty, because we all follow our clubs blindly, like right? And we're, and we're thick and thin, regardless if they win or lose. We can get angry about it uh, because but because we're passionate about the club, but we want to know things. So he, he went, great, it's gone. Now, why did they let him go? And why haven't they got a replacement in? Or we, we couldn't find some in order. They got the best of, of a bad situation, right? They got £350,000 off their wage budget each week, and they got rid of a player that didn't want to play. Okay, that's... That, that's fact but maybe th there needed to be more of a right he's gone and this is why we've let him go because it's going to even if it was just a financial situation and go right we've let him go because actually he's not in the plans at the end of the year he's going to go and this saves us 25 million in wages for example right everyone's happy with that side of things no one's going to go oh, okay you know what that doesn't make that, that's fine uh, we want to get someone in but actually that's going to be easier in, in se September or, or August, sorry, when, when the new transfer window is open. And we don't want to do business over Christmas, right? The fans are a little bit annoyed about it, but actually they understand what's going on. As a fan of my club, I'd rather that happen than we're chasing fairy tales of players that have said they don't want to come to us or using my club as leverage to go to somewhere else. And that pretty much is what happened the whole of December. It was chasing this, sorry, January. It was just chasing a one player who never said he was going to go there and always sounded like he was caught in other clubs. And then that to me was the, the bit of uh, 
of the kicker. So come out, address the fans, let them know what's going on because we're not stupid and we find out from the press or everything else um, and then actually have a plan of what is going on so we, so, so we know. I'm not an Arsenal fan, but I was still annoyed by the whole situation. Handled well for getting him out, of course. Ladies and gentlemen, this I, 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 I love my my wonderful pundits because this is the only show that we're actually here to give the manager flowers, but we end up talking about all the things that they've gotten. Wait, why are we talking? Why are we, what's this flowers theme anyway? First of all, it does, anyway see, America, I'm America, Americans say it. it's not. We're not literally giving him flowers. However, okay. you mentioned that you think he handled the Obama Young situation well. Yeah, but so I, 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 don't, I don't agree with Neil. One point. So, uh, and that's regard to fans. Uh, well, he used the word intelligence. So I, I won't diss anybody's intelligence, but I, I, I would say in terms of fans knowing about information, I think that's debatable because if Aubameyang goes and you get somebody else in, whoever that is, and, and they're banging goals, fans have a short memory. No one's going to care why Aubameyang did it. He was late. He wasn't late. Whatever. No one's going to care because the, the guy who's replaced him is banging in goals. And that's all that people care about what fans care about for the most part at the end of the day. Some fans like, like, like Neil who reads The Guardian or whatever might be there want to find out why, 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 why. But most fans that Financial read The Sun. Times. Yeah. The ones that read The Sun and The Star and that, they just want to know that their number nine or their number 10 or whatever is banging in goals. And, and that's the bottom line. So the problem with the transfer from a fan's perspective is they didn't replace him or they use Lacquer, who wasn't scoring goals. But, but by your same goals. logic, if they get in the top four, the fans are going to have short memories and they won't care as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly, exactly. So all, 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 all that matters is, is, is how that goes on. So even though we're, we're moaning now in the short term because he didn't replace him, it looks like we're going to get in top four anyway. So by default, as as you mentioned before, Julian, the ends justify the means somehow, but he kind of bumbled through it. But I agree with Neil in terms of it, it, it could have been handled better, but hey, it is what it is. Uh, like, the, it, it, if, we, if we get in top four, no one's going to remember. No one's going to care. If we don't, somebody's going to say somewhere, oh, well, if we had if we had Oba, we, this would have, we'd have done it. Well, we wouldn't have. Sticking to, so with Ateta though, the, the last part of the conversation I want to have with Ateta is let's talk about a bit of his strategy, tactics, you know, things that he does. And in terms of this, his style of play, so from what I understand, and correct me if I'm wrong, Doug, you see Odegaard is the main guy. He's the, the most creative guy in the team. He plays wingers, kind of, or forwards, if you want to, in Saka, Martinelli. And he kind of makes the midfield. when If he has everybody fit, Shaka, Partey, his defence have been really good. Gabriel and Ben White have done, well, at least once again, if you're comparing to last season and their partnership has been solid this season. So did he, like most good managers, did he find that one formation with the personnel to suit that? And that was what made Arsenal play at least better than everybody else that has been competing for the fourth spot. Dunk? Yeah, so at this stage of the season, like pushing top four you've got to say he's found some some of the ingredients for for success there um obviously he he comes from man city as pep's assistant so that's the kind of school of football he's he's been trained in uh, that's what he aspires to so obviously when he's coming into arsenal they're not going to magic wand from arteta just start playing like man city so again there's that kind of transition period where he's he's bringing in the youngsters trying out the new players and he's trying to get the system over to what he's used to at man city and get it to that like aspirational level correction of correction a lot of people but, say arteta gets his thing from pep arteta is a product of the barcelona system so that 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 tiki taka football or whatever he's trying to implement is something he has always known since he was a kid. But isn't Pep also a, a graduate from the Barcelona system? Yeah, that's fine. So, but you can say Ateta is trying to do what Barcelona does, not what Pep does. Because everybody, not, thinks, but oh, every, every, everybody makes it sound like he learned everything from Pep. Arsenal don't play tiki taka. So yeah, but you're, not you're, yet. you're talking about his playing days. So, like as a manager, I think you're going to take more from 
if if you're a Pep's assistant, you're going to take more about the management side of the game than Agreed, when you're Don't keep going. Don't worry about him. <laughs> no, but you could you could learn from the most if, almost if, anybody if that's been get in Barcelona. If we want about where it's actually from, it's from Johan Cruyff and they're from Ajax. So if we want to trace the it back, that's the days of total football, right? And then going through. No, he didn't. He didn't play there. He didn't play there. <laughs> <laughs> he, he wasn't even alive. He definitely didn't learn it there. <laughs> he wasn't even alive. That's Sweet where it goes back to, and that's the philosophy of the title football, right? Yeah. Go on, Dan. Can your point was really okay, well, valid. Yeah. Anyway, like wherever he gets it from, I'm I'm going to argue like he's going to obviously take more of his managerial style from learning as an assistant manager to Pep. So obviously, as a player, I think when you're a player, like when he was younger playing in that system, like are you really taking that in with an eye to management? I mean, you're going to take it. Do. In, Some players do. Yeah, you'll 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 take a lot of it in in relation to your your gameplay and fitting in with that system. Um, so it's like, I mean, if, if if we're using that situation and Pep didn't, so Pep learnt everything he says he learnt as a player under Johan Cruyff, right? So he was never his assistant. He was never in the team when Johan Cruyff was the manager. But he says his philosophy, which he kind of enhanced a bit, had put his own spin to it, is from his playing days pretty much. Yeah, but Chelsea so, was under Moyes and Wenger in between that. So the, the, he just he, he well Wenger is pretty much Tiki Taka and Moyes pretty much Moyes no that's he always had to block wants to be Tiki Taka oh so 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 all that all that time he played for Moyes which is longer than he played for anyone else for for, for, for for Wenger he blocked that part out but then suddenly when he played for Wenger he, he, he opened could. his mind again I didn't yeah. say that all I'm saying is that his DNA of football is from the Barcelona system it's but not I don't understand what I, I would say what. Pe- what Pep was in a more privileged position. Like, if you're going to try and play that system, you're at mm-hmm. Barcelona. It's going to be a lot easier than like bringing that system into Arsenal, for example. Uh, yeah. yeah. So my my point really was like he's whatever wherever he's got his views from, he's got his aspiration of how he wants his team to play football, and he's going to have taken it from Pep and taken from some from Barcelona in his playing days. Uh, so he he's kind of like obviously got to make that progression. Like I said, you can't just come in and expect players to be playing that especially established ones in the team. So, yeah, I again, like I think he's done a, a good job. He's found some of the magic formula. He's got them playing. Um, because where you guys are saying, where you guys are saying about the uh, January transfer window, what, wasn't that massive run? Surely a mo- most of that big 11 or 12 game run, that must have been after January. And then they only had the three game dip and now they're on a decent run again. So like since January, like they've been doing pretty well. Well, yeah. sticking to stick, sticking to strategy and you know philosophy, in terms of strategy, Neil, what's the best thing that you think Aceta has done for the Arsenal team? Uh, I think what he wears on a touchline for me, he, he comes across as he, he's well presented. <laughs> um, it looks the part, gelled hair. He's got that dyed mm-hmm. hair. It's beautiful, man. Um, so. Regardless of, um, we've already touched on where, where he's got his footballing philosophy from. From by all accounts, he was a note a note taker, always. When he, especially when he got to his thirties, he was taking notes and he was trying to get as much information about tactics and, and what to do and, and learn it. And he he, Mo, I don't care what anyone says. Moyes is a good manager. He's done well wherever he's been, apart from United that gave him like three weeks and that was it. Um, so Moyes has done that's right Neil Moyes has done well the fans are intelligent they'll research at Everton <laughs> he didn't do well at Sunderland did he <laughs> hey, look, look. Everton and West Ham he's done well at right and there is there is clubs no one else cares about anywhere else he's been he's, he's done well okay. I think he's learned from Pep that there's a lot of fundamentals and man management skills that he would have learned working with the older school generation of Moyes who's, who's been through it all if that makes sense, he's worked in the nineties, the noise and the tens, twenties, right? He is, he's seen generational changes of how to talk to players. And these are the bits and pieces that as a footballer going into that next level uh, of hierarchy, he's going to have had to learn. So to get his point across and how he deals with different personalities, he's probably done quite well because he's managed to, and he's managed to get Xhaka back in the team and no one cares about the fact he threw his fucking shirt on the floor and had a hissy fit. Language. Do you know what I mean? Apologize. Yeah, I apologize for that. But no one, no one cares about that anymore, do they? Like that, that's moved on. So, and he's also got, there's been a couple of games where they've not been at the races, but 
generally their playing as a unit and as a team. So regardless if they go wrong a bit here and there, they're backing each other up a lot more. And you don't actually see much fighting in the games in between players. That it's kind of a they're still really missing that awesome. Uh, captain that probably is missing from all gen- uh, this generation anyway of, of all teams to bring the players up but other than that then I think they're really working well so for, for me his man management is probably the key to his success regardless of, of, of any of his tactics and I think he's he should be applauded heavily for for that all right and to end the Atleta topic in terms of doing well and exceeding expectations the angry one you talk about things that he stumbled into, things that he gets wrong. In terms of strategy tactics, what's the one thing that you can applaud Ateta? First of all, I'll say his man management is so-so because he, he only really looks at a smaller squad. So he, if you're not in his, if you're one of his favourites, then he excludes you. So that's why the Enketias weren't playing. That's why, the, that's why the Tavares weren't playing. That's why the Pepes ain't playing. So... I think if you're in the limelight, uh, yeah. I, I, I disagree. Great. They weren't playing because they weren't good enough. Pepe's not been good enough since he signed and Tavares isn't good enough either. And Enketia... But he's playing now. ...had to come into the team because they had a nervous striker. But the others but now weren't he's good doing enough, right? Than, but, but, now, but, but, now, but now looking at it, he's doing as well as the guy that he replaced. So you would have to question why didn't he play a few more games? But anyway, that that that's besides the point, although it is the point. But anyway, um, with regard to what he's done well... The best thing he's done is stamp his authority by getting rid of Aubameyang for me because he said, look, I'm not taking no shit. Uh, this guy's going. I know he, he's a big figure in the in, in the team, best player in the team, allegedly, on the biggest wages, the captain as well, but he's taking liberties. Do one. I don't care about the cost. He's got to go. Everyone else will be like, rah, what's going on there? If, 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 if this guy can go, I need to fix up. And then ever since then, like Duncan said, we had a good run. We had a dip now and again, but I think that 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 made the that sharpened the focus for the for the squad. Maybe that's because Aubameyang was having a bad influence. Maybe not. Maybe it's just the fact that it's it's a statement, and everybody else then falls in line. Pick your pick your poison. But I think that was the best thing he's done, because the other thing is yeah, kind of hit, hit and miss. He you, we can debate whether or not he stumbled upon it whether it was deliberate or not. But, only, but we know what is deliberate is that uh, that Aubameyang goes. And for me, that, that was a good decision. Regardless of whether we finished fourth or not, it, it, it seemed to gal- galvanise the team, as, as Neil said, into, in, into a harmonic situation. Well, it's a season that has shown progress for the Arsenal team, the Arsenal manager. Some may, may or may not like his style or what he does or feel like he stumbles into things. But a few more games in the Premier League and we'll see where Arsenal finishes. They are in the fourth spot, four points ahead of Tottenham, just before the North London derby. Let's see if there are any twists and turns for that position. In terms of also recognising good managers with good implementation, good project skills, we go to the seaside are they the seaside? Brighton's manager, Graham Potter. The seagulls, now, the, are they? The seagulls, yeah. Mm. Um, so one of the the best thing, every time we talk about Graham Potter, the thing I talk about here is knowing how to use your resources. I think slowly, slowly, Brighton is going from a team that is always trying to fight for Premier League um, status to a team that might just be, maybe get being the just being the balance. You don't have to worry about them going down. This is the best ever finish they have had in the Premier League. Trashing Man United 4-0 at the weekend. So it is, <laughs> he's, the man is, the man is, well, I look at the, look at the joy that brings these guys for me to actually say that. Wait, wait, say again, say again. Say I'll say it again at some point when it's needed. <laughs> okay. when it's needed. I think it's needed. Yeah, I think 90 minutes of just hearing that would get massive views. <laughs> that is that is how sad you are, man. That is how sad you are. It's one but, um, Neil, Graham Porter, in terms of in terms of formation, I think he plays a 3-5-2. And he has actually gotten those players, regardless of who's playing in those positions, he has brought some good players out. Is it just once again linking personnel to the formation, or there's some a bit of extra that he does to his team that's making them play really well? So there's a couple of thoughts here. One, the team's got grit. Not many teams in the Premier League have got as much grit as Brighton. They they want to win. They want to fight. Um, is it Kuku? I don't know how to pronounce his name. Kukuleri that scored his goal. Kukurella. That's it. Scored his goal on the weekend, man. That guy cried when he scored a goal. So. People playing for a team 
and having that much passion, I think is, is really nice to see. Um, so, so that's really, really important. That just shows uh, of the passion of the club. Three, five, two. I think, I think this is the, the one thing that irks me about football manager. So he doesn't play a three, five, two. He, he does on the front foot, but then it goes to a four, uh, a five, four, one on, on when, when they're defending, right? So there's an attacking in three, five, two with, with the wing backs, but otherwise, is a five uh, a five four one when they're looking to defend, which I think is really really important to, to focus on how they react on the transition off the ball. So when they're looking to get that ball back, they don't just sit in a three five two and hope for the best. You know they're back, they're in a formation, and they're really well disciplined. They're compact. They work for each other. They don't really have that many household names that you look through and go, oh, oh he's fantastic, he's fantastic. I think what. Uh, Brighton remind me of is uh, a team that is in transition and that potentially could go somewhere but let's also not get too carried away with, with who they've got because they need the, a couple more quality signings to get them further up the league he is doing wonders there and beating Man United 4-0 for any team in the league regardless of if they're, they're top or, or whatever is still so <laughs> Say that again. I think I said four. What happened? <laughs> four nil. Four, four, four. And and he's. Uh, I think after the game, he he comes across as uh, humble as well after. And he, he he said that of the stature of Man U beating that, regardless, is is one of the proudest moments in Brighton's history. Um, and I think that's quite a nice thing and a quite a nice sentiment. But that's also holding on to a little bit of the old Man United being a decent team, right? Opposed to potentially where where they really are battling for seventh and, and Brighton or what ninth. There's not really there's much no, there's, in it. There's no, there's no battle. <laughs> there's no battle for seventh. There's just, they just find, we just find ourselves there. The, the, the thing is you, you mentioned that they play three, five, two, then they change to four, five, four, one, but a lot of teams do that. But you mentioned they're great playing for each other. And you know, the, the, the fact that, Let's not get carried away. That's fine. But let's acknowledge the progress they have made and doing, you know, consistently and bringing in that grit, as you have mentioned. Now, Dunk, the question I do want to ask you about Graham Potter is, is now that he's doing as good as he can for Brighton, do you think it gets harder every season, especially if he doesn't use, they don't give him enough money and resources and if he obviously if he does get harder, does that acknowledge how good a manager he is? Uh, I think it does. Like the the journey I compare him to is fairly similar to like what Eddie Howe went through as well. Um, good young English manager, you bring up an unfancied team into the league. Um, you have a couple of seasons maybe towards the bottom, and then you have maybe like a breakthrough like Brighton are having now, and you finish in the top ten. Uh, and, and then you kind of like it's it's a really tough job from there. Like Eddie Howe, like wasn't flooded with job offers when he when he left Bournemouth. Admittedly, they had relegation, but like you you, you get to this stage where you're like a mid table team and you achieve something like Brighton possibly are going to achieve this season, finishing maybe eighth or ninth. Uh, and then what happens from there? Like you have to consistently hit that. So I'd say that the job does get harder once you once you hit that certain level, but. Again, like from from one point of view, if you look at the table this season, it's it's a little bit more spread out now. But at one point, there was like four points between ninth and sixteenth. So, I mean, cre credit to them, like they they are up there at the top of that pack, where which are all condensed in the middle of the league. Uh, but again, what, what next season is he going to be able to keep that up? Is he going to be able to improve? It, it just, I'd say, it does get really hard from there, and and then you have to see how it goes from there. Like what happened to Eddie Howe. Got, got to that kind of mid-table and then it kind of fell off a bit because went to the bottom of the pack. Maybe you have some injuries and an unlucky season. But yeah, definitely definitely, I see it as like a hard job. And you wonder, you wonder how long these guys, I mean, Eddie Howe's got Newcastle now, but that might have been a lack of other options. How long do these like young English managers have to, have to do it like consistently before they get offered a, a job at a bigger club? Well, well ask Lampard. You... You considering considering the teams you support, I, I understand you definitely know what being difficult is. I know, I know, I know the pain. You were talking from experience. In terms of the angry one, you were talking about man management. Now, man management. Oh, look at you! You can count. I'm so I'm so happy for you. You're talking about man management. In terms of Graham Potter, though, how yeah. on a scale of one to ten, how 
how high or low, if you think, would you rate his man management? Because Dunk mentioned the job is difficult in terms yeah. of injuries and stuff. At some point, they didn't have Lamte. Lalana is in and out of injuries. Welbeck are the same. Mope, they have lost for some time. But the team is still playing, once again, with grit and mm. wanting to perform. So how high would you rate his man management with how things have gone? I'd say it's very high. Uh, G Potts, as I started to call him as of just now. Basically, he has instilled a competitive streak in those players, the will to win, or, or, or at least the will to compete. Something that, to be fair, we, we talk about in another show, my uh, United are seriously lacking. So because you have that will to win, the will to, the will to compete, it doesn't matter. The, the, the personnel can change, but the effort won't change. And sometimes in some games, it's effort that gets you through through, through, through the pain and, and not ability. It's just sometimes it's just a pure effort. So he's got them, he's got them all, as they say in football, he's got them all buying into the project. They, they all believe on what, on what he's trying to do, what he's trying to achieve. And they're seeing results as well, if we're honest, because they're what the ninth now. For Brighton, that's, that's, that's outstanding. So when, when you have that, in order for you to get that, that level of success, you must be a good man manager for people to, to, to listen and follow you, a good leader. And so that's what he's that's what he's got, and also as well, I would say also about the recruitment as well, because you, you don't just pick random players who who want to compete. Otherwise, all teams would compete, and and, and then no teams would just flop and, and have and, and have those bad blips and stuff. You so so they've looked at the right players. They've got the right players, and the players have listened to the manager. They've bought into it. So that's so I would also give it out to the recruitment because they've bought the right players. In addition to. G Potts being a being a good man, man manager. So. Well, is this a case that Brighton will have to back him up, more resources, more money? If not, as Donk has mentioned, the job will get even harder. Neil, yeah, uh, that does not be. Um, he he also sold one of his best defenders as well to Newcastle. Uh, he sold Burn right, and they've still continued to perform. So he's selling a. a a, a good and Ben White to us. A good some good centre backs, right? And still maintain that. So there's two issues I think Brighton will have is they get too many good players. Are they a selling club? Much like Southampton used to be. I don't know. I don't want to compare the two because they're both. But Southampton notoriously sell their best players. I don't know why they're in the Premier League, right? They should try and keep hold of them as much as they possibly can, unless it's overinflated prices. Brighton potentially might go down the same route. Um, which would be a, a shame. So can he keep the squad together? Can he then improve that squad? He's also managing players with less of an ego, uh, I would assume. I don't know them, any of them. I don't know any Premier League footballer, but I would assume they have less of an ego because they come with less baggage playing for Brighton. So they might be more thankful for having that opportunity rather than looking at um, someone like Jaden Sancho, for instance, who comes with a big ego and a good performance from his previous club. So you're going to Brighton, you know you're not going to be winning anything. And that sounds really horrible, but they, they don't think they're going to win the league, right? They don't go in the league, oh, I'm going to win the Prem this season. They're looking to be competitive. And now they've got that competitiveness. They can then take it to the next level, hopefully. You don't have to put your hand up, Mike. Just interject, man. It's not school. Okay, so I was going to say, I was going to say, oh, because, you know, I got told off by JJ last time for injecting. So, Sometimes we um, take him to school, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> thank, thank, thanks, Dad. Um, so the thing is with that is, I agree, but don't agree because Man United don't think they're going to win the league either, yeah? But they've got egos in there who are not doing what they're supposed to do. And Basuma, in an interview, said that he thinks he's the best, one of the best midfielders in the league. So he's got ego. But the difference between him having ego is that he's still willing to work to achieve something and he's still bought into the manager's philosophy, whatever it is. So I think they do have ego. I'm sure they think that they're good players and they could play for better teams. But whilst they're there at Brighton, they've bought into what G Potts is saying and they're working because ultimately you still need to be winning games regardless because it's, it's professional pride, it's competitive. It's, if so anybody think, knows Graham Potter, man, just, just tell him that he has a new name, G Potts. <laughs> You're right, G Potts. Imagine if yeah. Bissoma calls him G Potts. <laughs> Yo, Gaffa, G Potts. But in terms, of, in terms of, in terms of, um, you know, them being humble, so they have the you know, big egos, but then they're still humble enough to listen to their managers. At the end of the day, still, or it's still man management and getting the message across. And they have a very thin squad, as, as you mentioned. And 
if they are only just getting to that competitive level, then then Bright, Brighton beat you as well at home. Oof, at the Emirates. Brighton Oof. have won a lot of good games this nah. season. Yeah, beat Tottenham, beat Arsenal. Anyway, anyway, but you can keep doing. <laughs> Am I not on holiday? The players are gone. Anyway, so, but Graham Potter, interesting job. Is there? A, I'll ask you this, Dunk. Is there a limit? Is he is he going to be one of those situations like Sean Dyche? That is there a limit? Graham Potter can get to where he has to tell himself, "Look, I need to live on a high." because I've taken this team as far as I can, especially with the resources. Because it's always the case that what these managers do is wait too long till things start going badly. So is there a limit to... Do you think this is the limit? Do you think they can get even better next season? Yeah, that's what I was talking about, about being hard. Like, what realistically, what is the limit for Brighton? Is it Europe? Are Brighton going to qualify for Europe? That's probably a, a bit of an ask. So again, like, the the limit at the minute probably would seem to be securing top half finishes. Obviously, if you do that, you get more money. Um, like like Neil said earlier, he's mentioned in Southampton. Southampton are probably like one of the most extreme or well-known cases in the league for selling their players. But I guess the, like the, the realistic situation is that those kind of clubs are going to have to sell like star players. They're going to want to move to bigger clubs if they have outstanding players. But again, like like mentioned earlier, like what Mike said about signings, they, they've got some made some really good signings. They've got some really good players. Uh, in their team um, but again like from his point of view from the question you asked like do you stay too long like no no manager sees it coming that like relegation or a, a really bad season if, if if you get like if you achieve something with a club you'd have confidence in yourself that you're going to be able to do that again um, and and kind of going back to the point that I made earlier like are, are, is he going to get a chance somewhere else is someone going to give him a chance you, you'd hope so because like he's done a really good job again young English manager you'd hope someone gives him a chance. So may, maybe it'll be the situation that someone will offer him something uh, while he's just consistently doing a good job at Brighton. That, that's what I'd like to see anyway. Do so, Sorry, well, can I just put one thing in there? Because uh, I think he's, he's got some good points. But I think there's, uh, for me, there's a slight difference between Brighton and, and Bournemouth. Um, and if I go back to Charlton, like they were uh, a team that was up there for a, a long period of time until they got rid of Kerbishley. But they had a, a, ambitions above their their station at that particular point. I think it's Bournemouth didn't get backed in the transfer market, right? Eddie Howe wasn't getting backed, which I think was probably the the worst thing. I don't think he was that they were investing enough money into the squad. Brighton seemed to be investing into the squad each season, which is which is progress, which is a, a good thing. Leicester done it and managed to get back up, get into the top, win the league. I know it was a, a fairy tale, but they they have qualified for the Champions League since. So there's no reason why why these lower perceived stature clubs can't actually reach for the stars and get at least a top seven finish, which is European football or a, or a decent cup run. So I think that would be the next step. As long as he gets supported in the transfer market and continues to get some of these unearth these gems that no one else is going for, or maybe they are, and it's just a better proposition going to Brighton. I don't know. Then they carry on like that. The upward trajectory for me is top seven and starting battling and overtaking where, where Wolves are, uh, and looking to to be against the West Ham's of the league, and, and potentially, you know, th- there's a massive gulf between second and third now in the league. So, I mean, if, if you're talking top seven, like count, count them out. You got you got your Liverpool, Man City, yeah. Man United, Chelsea, Arsenal, Spurs. There's there's six straight away. Like, is a club like Brighton going to be able to compete with those six? Like so, then Possibly. basically, then you're you're scrapping over, like you said, maybe that last spot there against. Well, they've beat everybody. The they've beat most people this season, right? And they've had off days. That's the problem. Mm. You've got to turn those th- those around. So I, I don't think that they should. And, be and they, they haven't got a top striker. They haven't got a top striker either. They haven't got. They haven't got a prolific striker. They've got Welbeck and they've got Mapoy or Mapai. Neil Malpe. Yeah. They have yeah. Trossard. Yeah. They have. Yeah, but they're wingers. Also, I've said, I'm saying that regardless of Potter leaving, he's not going to leave. Why would he leave? Only top tier managers like Pep can say oh, I'm leaving with with no job or 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 maybe Conte or something. But Potter's not going to leave and do what? He's got no nothing to go, nowhere to go, and, and lose all your comp- compensation. Even from a financial aspect, that's just dumb. So he's he's gonna uh, also he's gonna believe in his, his abilities. But even even if he thought you know what, I'm not up for it. He's still gonna keep playing, or keep working until they sack him and they pay pay him out. Who's who's gonna leave before that? That's a madness. Come on. 
And ju- and just to respond to Neil, Neil was like saying about Bournemouth, like Leeds are facing the same thing that Bournemouth went through. Like one one season, you get key players injured for long 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 layoffs. I mean, Brighton have had it a little bit. Pasuma was out for a while as well. But like a season like that can just just crock you. You could be well, down. Dunks, we're, we're talking about proper teams here. <laughs> yeah. But have Leeds invested? I think, that, that's the I problem, think Bournemouth right? are officially a Premier League team. They are now. Yeah. But they're not uh, investing. No, this is ne- next season. The investment's been poor, well, right? And I think that's the key thing. I think the recruitment... So so if it's part of... It's not going to be part of by himself, but his team are an awesome recruitment team and they're getting in the right recruitment. So respect for him for getting that recruitment policy right and everybody else and putting them in place. But that that should go across the whole of the Premier League of looking through and taking that as an example of we're getting players that fit our team and our style. And I know there's top teams that do it, but it's, it's, it's really good and uh, impressiveness for a mid team. If, if they get Eddie next season, top seven, for sure. <laughs> which, well, there you go, G pots. <laughs> good, good, Eddie good Guerrero. advice. <laughs> good advice given to you. If you get Eddie, you shall finish seventh. Well, I think it's been a good season for Brighton and Arsenal, even if the season is still on. And as you, as Dunk said, we still have a few more games, so the position might change and it might actually go higher. Mikel Ateta, G. Potts, Graham Potter, we applaud your managerial influence this season. Now, moving on to the weekend fixtures and all the things that happened in the, in the Premier League, let us break it down into the relegation. We'll start from the bottom. So Watford has been sent back to the championship. And as Dunk mentioned... We have Fulham and Bournemouth, who have been automatically promoted. Dunk is happy, as Bournemouth happens to be his second team. But let us start with Burnley v Aston Villa. Neil said he really hoped Burnley goes down. Dunk loves Aston Villa, as Gerard has given them the new manager pump. He, Neil, he got my seal of approval last week, and he's fully justified that this week. All right, I like it. So, okay, let's start with you, Dunk. Burnley one, Aston Villa three. Is this the? Is this the? Is are we looking like Burnley is going to join the other two? Uh t- tough. But that, like, as a as a as a Leeds fan, that's nice for me because they've still got to play Villa again, haven't they? At, at Villa Park. Uh, so, yeah. Again, Burnley is is so fickle down the bottom. Like, what happens? Like, Burnley got that run of games. Did they get the three wins? Everton have got two now. Leeds did it when Marsh took over, so it's it's just like stupidly tight to call. Um, so Burn- Burnley are still in with a shout. Ob- obviously, they're a goal difference above Leeds, and there's one point between the the three clubs. So I, I'm not going to be ruling them out at this stage, but you can just look at it. They've ju- they've just lost a bit of momentum there. So in relation to Leeds, Leeds have had like their two toughest fixtures. They have Man City and they had Arsenal away, whereas Burnley have lost at home to Villa. So that's going to be a bit more of a kick in the balls to them and maybe take some of the momentum away. Okay, well, we shall see what happens with that and see with the next the few games left. Sticking to the bottom of the table, and we talk to Everton, Leicester v Everton today. Neil, you love your Everton and love Lampard, and he will be playing in the middle of the park. Everton 1 2 1. Surely, with their last two victories against Chelsea and Leicester, and them having games in hand, you can say they're going to stay up. Everton had a hard, harder last two games, I think, than most most teams down there. Uh, and they've come out with not Dunk's seal of approval and a couple of two, a couple of middle fingers up at Dunk for saying that Lampard's got no effect. And, and maybe having the effect of when it counts is more important than having it at the beginning, right? That's the key thing. Stay in power is, is, is important. I think Lampard's had a really hard job over everybody else in there because there was issues there was that there's been so much going on at Evan that they've needed to find themselves again I think um yeah I'm pleased for for Lamps I think he's doing a good job to try and have them battling and it's going down to the last stand I'm really disappointed that Dunk didn't have any Michael Jackson puns for the for the Burnley but but it definitely looks like a thriller at the bottom doesn't it the, the episode's not over yet. That was bad. <laughs> By the way, Neil, that was bad. <laughs> that, that was really bad. Sorry, mate. I need to look at the man in the mirror, don't I? <laughs> so, sorry, just on, just on football, man, it's that, that Mikalenko goal was a banger. Like, yeah. Oh, yes. From a fullback was... volleying in like that, man, that was good. That was a good goal. Very it, good It won't goal. be assist as well, Neil. 
great player, there man. You go. What a, what a mid central midfielder. He's missing in that Arsenal team right now. The angry one. What do you... I mean, Watford is your second team, as you've always said, and they're going to the championship. Crystal Palace beat them 1-0. We talked about Vieira's style of play. Crystal Palace, do you see them improving even further if Vieira is given, once again, resources, money, and happens to build on the success he has had this season? Yeah, um, if, if he's backed. Yeah, I mean, whether, whether he'll keep Conor Gallagher is remaining to be seen for a start. That's going to be a big miss. Um, I think you'll probably get Eddie in. So that'll probably boost. How many people success. do you want Eddie to? Where, where, how many I'm, places I'm, do you I'm want Eddie agent. to go to? Eddie, hey, if you're listening, <laughs> sign Eddie. I'll tell you, sign Eddie. Anybody, sign Eddie. But anyway, yeah. So I think Palace can improve. They can get, I mean, Zaha's, he's getting more out of Zaha than Zaha's done in the last five, six years, for whatever reason. Um, and he's got some good players in there. He's got Eze. He's got, he's got some good attacking players in there. They're reasonably solid. They play decent football. They hunt in packs in, ter in terms of being defensively solid. So there's no reason. But the progress is always about, in, in football terms at least, um, investment, to be honest. You, you don't just get better just by playing next season. You Normally you have to invest and improve. That's just how it goes with football, unfortunately. So if they invest, yeah, they, they will they will improve. Uh, and it doesn't have to be massive, 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 massive amounts of investment, but they have to improve that squad. Um, and, and if they do that, then there's no reason why an invincible like Vieira cannot uh, make Palace, you know, be more than they they are now, you know. Okay. I mean, uh, just in case you guys didn't know, Vieira is invincible. Well, yeah, I was just comparing him to Shosha, who's a who's a, a legend. Uh, yeah, he, yeah, a, a yeah he is. Winner, mm -hmm. and he's a, but he's a whack manager. So I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. yeah. just, just, to just to clarify, Liverpool yeah. aren't going to beat the Invincibles' achievement this season. Mm -hmm. Well, no. <laughs> Speaking about Liverpool, I mean, and talking about two teams that were going for the fourth spot, Liverpool v Tottenham. Last week, we mentioned on this program, well, I think Big Steve was the only person, and I asked the question like three or four times, are you sure Tottenham can get any results at Liverpool? Big Steve went for the draw. The rest of you went for Liverpool winning. So, Dunk, Tottenham, that you tipped are, to finish fourth. Are you fourth. sure about that? I think I predicted yeah. a draw, didn't I? In my prediction. Yeah. I'm going to have to go back and watch that. Yes, think, go back. Yeah. Go back go back and watch it. But Tottenham did well, 1-1, one, one, and they pretty much closed. Do you think this is it's over for Liverpool in terms of winning the league? Uh, it has to be. Like, they're, they're three points behind, and Man City thumped Newcastle 5-0. So I think they've got four better goal difference now. So you're looking at, for Liverpool to win the league, Man City have to get spanked by someone or lose by a couple of goals and Liverpool have to absolutely roll someone over uh, we were talking last week about how could we see Man City like getting a draw somewhere but you, you definitely can't see them losing or, or drawing two games so uh, I'd say probably game over for the title for Liverpool yeah okay and we go to the team that is most likely going to finish fourth Arsenal v Leeds the angry one good game at the Emirates, were you impressed? Or is it just the results that matters? So it's the result that matters because, I mean, I was impressed with the two goals we caught scored early on. But when, but then we're playing against 10 men and I know it's hard to play against 10 men and I know we had 10 minutes against Liverpool and Liverpool couldn't score against us. But I would have expected us to do more against 10 men. Um, and we didn't. And we looked, it was a bit squeaky bum time near the end. And, you know, in football, you never know. Um, Leeds could have, could have nicked a point there. So... Uh, the latter part of the performance wasn't fantastic, but I mean, if you look at it from another perspective, Arsenal are learning to win ugly. We, we won ugly the last couple of games. Uh, and to be honest, that's a, a skill in itself. Um, so I'm happy with that. It, it, the result is all that matters because you can always perform better in the next game. Obviously, if you won ugly for 38 games, then you might question it. But then if you want to leave playing ugly, you probably be all right with it. So yeah, I'm happy with the result. Obviously, I'm still using my re reverse jinx, so I'm not watching games at the moment. And we'll keep winning. So I'm going to keep not watching games <laughs> until we lose. That's, that's good to know. That's good to yeah. know. Maybe Arsenal will start paying you not to watch games. You may make a fortune. I wish. I you wish. Make a fortune. I'll tell you if you're out well, there. If you're listening, you're you know where to send the money. And we look at Chelsea, Chelsea v Wolves. I think once again, I think the Chelsea players... Well, I, I was thinking the Chelsea players are waiting for the season and Lukaku with two goals and looking like, you know, the form is coming back at the wrong time. 
Uh, but they were 2 0 up and drew the game 2 2. Neil, what is wrong with Tuchel and his team? There's nothing wrong with Tuchel. Uh, he sends the players out to do a job. They're not performing. I don't think he should have taken Lukaku off. Regardless if he's putting an effort in up front or whatever, he is in that box and he is defending headers for corners for days. And he's the type of player I want in there for that and he will do that. Mendy, for me, is a whack goalie. I think he's had his season. He's peaked. He looked poor. He flaps. He's worse than David James. I, I would be bringing him in Kepa back. I think there's an argument now. The Kepa wasn't bad when they... Look, when he was at the African Nations, right? Chelsea was still up there. Since then... It's all gone Pete Tong, right? So I don't know what's happened. So you at think the Chelsea's change is because of Mendy? Well, certainly he's got an element to it. I don't think he's confident enough at the moment. I think his mistakes is out, and it's hard being a goalkeeper, right? You make a mistake. Um, let me look at the Leeds goalkeeper t- today, right? A fundamental mistake. Not a problem, though, but he did get on with it. He flapped a little bit for other things, but when he got that ball back again, he looked solid. Mendy, to me, hasn't had that clean sheet or, or that notion of I'm looking solid again and I think he is looking uh, a bit whack and I would probably put Kepa back in for the last bits of the season and I would keep Lukaku on the pitch regardless if he's on his last legs and dying because he only has to stay in the box and mark a player like w- like I said it before when we did the African Nations players of how good Drogba uh, is, is a defender and I think Lukaku's got that sameness about him of trying to head of the ball out and fighting for the club it might not be always the most athletic at the top of the pit but he is in there for the defence for those set pieces and Chelsea need that at the moment uh, Tuchel I don't know if he'll be there next season now uh, I probably would say he doesn't deserve it after what's happened and the, the decline and you can't blame the fact that the club's being sold to somebody else as it because they've still got jobs and they're all earning enough money to roll up their socks and put on a good show for the fans that, that are there it's, it's it's a disgrace if if that's the reason. I like it how he starts with there's nothing wrong with Tuchel, but then blames the guy for not for not keeping Lukaku on the pitch and a few other things. But well, it's there's still nothing good. wrong. Still a nice guy, right? Yeah, yeah, wonderful guy. <laughs> just just still... before we move on, can I can I just award the comedy moment of the week? I don't know if I watched the highlights. It was a real FIFA moment. The Wolves defender tried tried to pass his teammate on the wing, but it ended up being like a high powered pass at a guy five yards away from him, who just bounced off of him <laughs> and Lukaku into score. Oh, okay, comedy moment. There you go. Proper Big shout out to Brentford winning three nil, Brighton four nil against my United. And um, West Ham beating Norwich 4 0 and keeping their Europa, you know, league hope alive. Moving on to the fixtures, ladies and gentlemen, on Tuesday, the 10th of May, Villa v Liverpool. So at this point in time, let's just get the results in. Do you think Villa will help seal the league for Man City? Or do you think Liverpool will at least continue to push? Till the end of the season, Dunk fixtures. What yeah, do you so think? Spurs were good enough to take something from Liverpool. Uh, Villa, I don't think are. So I will go for a Liverpool three-one. Ooh, the angry one. Draw one-one. Did ooh, Neil, Stevie G in Coutinho like. They're rolling. They're having their bellies tickled. Goal difference. It's going to be a thrashing just so it goes down to to the wire if there's a problem. Uh, Villa are out. They're not even playing that game. They're not even turning up. <laughs> they're right. resting the squad for Burnley. Oh, they must as well, oh. man. They're not going to play that game, are they? With Gerrard's be like, what? I still need Liverpool to win. Nah. Okay, so you go Liverpool scores? Well, scores. I mean, if, if Villa turn up, it's six, seven. Uh, literally it's going to be that high what? they need the goals man I don't think Villa are even going to care he's going to be like look it's my old club come on guys Coutinho's like alright no worries it's, they're going to roll over that that game is not that's that's dead for them it's not important enough alright we shall see Wednesday Leeds important game for Leeds <sighs> Leeds versus Chelsea the angry one Leeds win 2-1 <laughs> is this in reality or in, in your dreams it's on the podcast. Okay. Leeds, right. Leeds win 2 1. All and right. Arsenal well, get fed. Okay. Wonderful. Uh, Dunk? Sod's Law. I, I, 
I'll try the reverse psychology. Sod's law, Chelsea are going to actually turn up for a game and they're going to beat Leeds 3-0. Reverse psychology. There we go. Reverse psychology. Yeah, I'm sure all the Chelsea team is listening. Neil? Uh, well, after the angry one's been flirting with, with Dunk on that scoreline, I, I felt a little bit sick, to be honest. And then we talked about <laughs> Alan flirting. Oh, Dunk, keep your team stays up, mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm doing it for Arsenal, getting yeah, fed. Yeah, Don't care about yeah. Dunks. Obviously, yeah, it looked like it. Uh, as you passed him the, the, the flowers. Um... Uh, Chelsea are going to have to turn up for that game, right? And at the moment, Leeds are dead. So, yeah, Chelsea 2 now. Watford Everton. Is this where Everton, you know, solidifies another stay in the Premier League, Neil? I mean, I do hope so, for Frankie's sake. Um, but this is the game that Watford win, right? This is the game that they come out of nowhere and it's just going down to the to the wire. Everton uh, take it for granted and for suddenly it's 1-0 to Watford and they win the game. I go on. Everton, 3-0. Dunk? Yeah, what, Watford are poor. Um, I, get, I give it to Everton, tight one, 2-1. One. Okay. Wolves, Man City. Do you think Wolves can do Liverpool a favour if Liverpool tries Villa the day before? Dunk. Uh, no, Man City are just rolling everyone in the league. Uh, easy, easy job for them. Three, well, I'll give Wolves one. We'll give it 3-1. It's usually a difficult ground to play in though. Do you agree with the Dunk, the angry one? I think City win. 2-0. Two, two so nil, nil. Man, they're steamroller in them. The, the, they've got the bit between their teams now. They've got no nothing else to play for. Uh, they're going to roll them over four, four nil. They rolled Newcastle over like a baby today. <laughs> and the big one, well, it it, it would have been big, but let's just say it's still big. They're not London derby Thursday. Let's start with you, the angry one. And please, no reverse jinx, no whatever turnaround spins. What? And oh, really? in my dreams and in my reality, who wins the game? Football head on. Draw. Mm. Score draw, Neil Neil? 2-2. Two, 2-2, two. Two, two. would you look at that? All right, Donk? Uh, I, I went for Spurs earlier in the season, didn't I? I, I think they've still got a bit more quality than... Uh, Arsenal, so I'm going to go for Spurs 2-1. They they got a point at Anfield, that's like big. And Neil? Arsenal have got one job in that game, and that's not to lose. Uh, if they can't get a draw out of that, that's just it. They're dead. Uh, but I think they'll, they'll get a draw. Well, I think it'll probably be 0-0. It's going to be too tight. <laughs> well, and that brings us to the most prestigious cup competition in the world, Saturday, Chelsea v Liverpool. The dreams for quadruple might have been mm, tainted a bit, but do Liverpool still have a chance for the FA Cup against two shells wonderful Chelsea? Donk. Uh, yeah, I back Liverpool to win win the Cups. I'm going to go with it. Uh, Chelsea, just too inconsistent. Um, Liverpool have lost the league pretty much now. Uh, so they're going to be right up for that. Cl close game. Chelsea will put up a fight. I'm going to go for 2-1 Liverpool. Okay. Neil? FA Cup final. This is Chelsea's to win, right? They've got, they've, they've got to win something this season. Havertz hat trick. 3-0. Chelsea. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the, the wonderful minds and logic of the beautiful pundits in grass grassroots chats. The ask, one. ask Paddy for the for the for the odds on that. It'll be awesome. I will. Well, it should be Liverpool winning that game. But seeing as they beat them in the Carabao Cup, whoever it is, or Johnson's Pay Trophy, whoever it is, I would say Chelsea get revenge. And they sneak a little 1-0 victory. Uh, and it would be, what's his face? That guy who never scores, the German geezer. Not have that, it's the other guy. Werner, Timo. that's it. Yeah, Timo scores the winner. 
Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. You have the predictions for the fixtures for the up- upcoming week. Let's see if any of these guys are actually correct. And of course, going on to the final segment of the show, player and flop of the weekend. Dunk, you've already given us comedy moments. Who's the player and flop of the weekend? <laughs> I'll, I'll be a gracious loser and he is an ex-player. I will give player of the week to Enketia. Uh, two goals. And I like to give it to p- players that like showing a bit of progress and form as well. So he, he's got a few goals. So I, I'll give it to Eddie and see him after the first goal. D- he didn't want to celebrate. I, I don't know if it's because against Leeds or the goalie mistake. He celebrated the second one a bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so player of the week, I'll give to Enketia. Uh, flop of the week, uh, I'm giving it to Ranyuk for, for he presiding over that 4-0 and I think he's just taken Man U nowhere this season. So I'm giving it to Ranić for flop of the week. Neil. Yeah, I'm, I'm with uh, Dunk. I think you've got to give it to Maguire uh, this week. He can't even get in a team that leads us 4-0 against Brighton. But, but you don't get any worse than did, that, right? Did, did you see Varane was trying to do his best Maguire impression? Oh, man, <laughs> he was literally like Maguire. I don't know what's going on there. They, they must go out and go, play football. How? <laughs> just play football, right? <laughs> What, any any formation just just play right you've all got you know where you play just go out um, and I'm going to give it to the player from Brighton I can't pronounce because he almost had me in tears when he was crying himself and anyone that's that passionate about football deserves to be player of the week in my eyes you'll, you'll probably find out from the news that his mum died last week oh no no no, no. Yeah. Like, rather than passion for football <laughs> I yeah, hope not man. for him play on flop the angry one Players got to go to Eddie for them two goes. Yeah. Flop is Manchester United in its totality. So that's the fans. That's that's the stadium. That's, that's the sponsors. That's the players. <laughs> Everything about my United right now is a flop. Big time. I don't know how you go out and lose 4-0 to, 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 to Brighton. I just, I just, and your Man United. Uh, but it's entertaining so it's fine all right do it. ladies and gentlemen that brings us to the end of the show thank you for listening if you like what you hear like what you see please hit that subscribe button notification follow us on every platform tiktok instagram youtube and of course you can find all episodes on our website grassrootsarts.com it's been Another weekend of entertaining, thrilling football. But all this week, we have concentrated on giving the managers the flowers, as they say. Well, as it stands now, it's a goodbye from Dunk. See you later, guys. Goodbye from Neil. Take it easy. And the angry one. Peace out, people. Until next time, more things.